Hello YouTube, and here I'm doing a review of the Acer Predator 17. This is a gaming laptop that I bought for about $1,700. Kind of pricey, but for gaming laptops, seventeen hundred dollars is a really good sweet spot. As you can tell, I still need a haircut. So let's go over the specs of this laptop. This has two point six gigahertz Skylake processor, quad core, of course. It's an i seven. It's the sixty seven hundred HK, I believe. Yeah, there's that, and it's also got a turbo boost up to three point five gigahertz. It's got an NVIDIA GTX 970M with 3 gigabytes of dedicated VRAM. As you can see, it can run Unigine Heaven perfectly. I've got the fans turned on to max. You can control the fans for running this, which is pretty cool because you can just do some basic stuff and have the fans on quiet, or you can put a big load on it and have the fans run like crazy. This um has three fans in it right now, I believe. I think it's three. But um, it comes with two. Um, here we go. The optical drive actually pops out, and you can put in a fan that was designed by Cooler Master, which is all I need to tell me that it doesn't work. <laughs> Let me adjust my mic here. It's a little low. I'm, like bending over. <clears throat> so yeah, as you can see, it does have some backlit keys. It's got red for the main area right here and the arrow keys and then over here on the number pad the keys are blue I don't know why they're blue that's that's kinda weird it's very weird why they're blue I don't get it you've got five macro keys here with a shift with a shift like button that you can push three times for a total of 15 macro keys which is great these five here already come pre-programmed to do stuff like control the fans and the the GPU and your discrete settings and whatever so that's what it comes pre-programmed with of course you can reprogram to do whatever you want like I guess control the volume or whatever and uh, this computer uh, has eight speakers in it two subwoofers four mid-range drivers and two tweeters and I will let you hear that now yeah so as you can see it does sound pretty good it's I mean at first it didn't sound that great the tweeters were very clippy and staticky and for some reason did not work right at all but then after about 10 minutes, everything was working perfectly and fine the way it was supposed to. No idea what happened there, but it all works fine now, so I'm okay with that. <clears throat> this um, comes with an application from Dolby that lets you control the equalizer. And it's, it's alright, you know, it's... Eh, who am I kidding? It's not that great. I messed around with the equalizer for a while, and the only way the speakers sound good is if you have it set for music. Don't set it for movie or for game ever, because that always echoes it, and it makes one range of frequencies higher than the others, and it just doesn't sound that good. So leave that on music. However, if it sounds better to you in any other kind of configuration, then go for it, you know? As you'll notice here, we have a key that is able to disable the trackpad and the windows key for if you're gaming with an external mouse because some people will bump the trackpad or hit the windows key and that can mess up their gaming performance very cool that they added that as you can see the WASD keys right here are highlighted doesn't do me any good because I'm left-handed and the computer world is not very friendly to left-handed people difficult for me um, so the aesthetics this computer's aesthetics are both a pro and a con for me. They're a pro because they just look really cool. I mean, they look fabulous. All the lighting 
and the color and the accents and whatever, it all looks very nice. The problem is, is it looks very pompous and kind of poserish. And, you know, I've had my, like, I I showed this laptop to some of my friends and they're like, dude, are you rich? And I'm like, no, not really. This wasn't that expensive of a gaming laptop. I'm not saying this was cheap, but when it comes to gaming laptops, it's not very expensive. I mean, I, I put every dime I had into this computer here, so... Uh, I am very pleased with it. Um, this computer, though, unfortunately, um, does have some older aspects of Acer's history in it. As we all know, Acer is not known for their high-quality products. More recently, they've been doing very good and putting out a better product, but in the past, the laptops have just been really bad. They've been flexible and stuff breaks on them easily and they've just not been good laptops overall. This computer does have some aspects of that like I said. Like for instance, all of the speakers are all wired into the same crossover. So basically they're all putting out the same frequency. They still sound really good, but that's that's kind of cheap that they did that. Also I noticed there this this um display has a damaged pixel. I am very unhappy about that because it's just annoying to the point where I don't like it, but that's not annoying enough for me to send the whole computer back and request a new one. I mean, if more pixels die, then I'll send it back. If they do die, I hope it happens soon because I don't want them to die like a year from now and then I'm shit out of luck. And another issue, this laptop, as far as I'm aware, you cannot get replacement parts for it. I actually almost lost this charging cable here, and I looked everywhere, and I could not find one. I suppose I could find a universal one that works, but the problem is, is it's very thick and very big, and I've never seen one that thick and big before. I mean, again, they'll, be pro they'll probably sell one at like Best Buy or something that's got all the different attachments, but I couldn't find the one that goes to this computer. So if anything breaks on it, good luck replacing it. Like, I mean, if this display dies, I'd be a little upset if I knew I could replace it. But if I couldn't replace it, it would suck. It would really suck because it essentially would be $1,700 in the trash. Um, keep in mind that price was with shipping and everything like that. The prices have changed for these. Like, there's a version with a GTX 980M, and that version is a little over $2,000. But um, the the one with the 970M, this one, and the one with the 980M were very close together in price, but slowly started going different ways. Mm, yeah. Anyways. So this computer's hard drive, I'm actually very, very impressed with. It's got an NVMe 128GB SSD with, with a read speed of 2.1 gigabits per second and a write speed of... 1500 megabits per second, which is 1.5 gigabits per second. Those are very, very nice speeds. I've, I mean, that's the fastest hard drive I've ever used before. And I'm very impressed with those speeds. I'm very happy with them. This also does have an HDD hard drive in it for storage for movies or games or whatever you decide to put on it. And um, it's one terabyte. It is just basic SATA interface. The read, the read and write speed on that drive, however, are still fairly impressive for an HDD. It is 7,200 RPM, and the read and write speed are about the same. They're like 330 megabits per second, which is about what you would get from an average computer. That's, that's good. <clears throat> so now let's look at the I.O. As you can see, this computer has... Four USB 3.0 ports, a headphone jack, and a mic port. It also has an SD card slot. It has a Thunderbolt 3 port, a display port, and HDMI, which is very nice. Um, this also has G-Sync monitor support, which is pretty cool. And the panel on here is also G-Sync. There's another application that comes with this. That's very cool. It comes with all Acer laptops, and I don't think it's exclusively for Acer. I think you can get this for any computer, but it's a pretty cool app. It's called Dust Defender, and what you do is you just open it up, click Clean Now, and what it basically does is the fans spin in the other direction, and it helps clear out some of the dust in there. 
Very cool. I'm very happy with that. I, I usually run that every time I turn it on or shut it off. Either way. Now the trackpad on this key, on this, um, on this king, on this laptop is kind of fumbly. It's not the best trackpad I've ever used before, but I, I've certainly used worse. It's okay, but it's not, it's not, it's just base. it's good for basic navigation and that's about it. I recommend using an external mouse with this laptop. This also has another application on it that is called Predator Sense. And you can open that up and it tells you what your CPU frequency is. And it also tells you what the temperatures are. And it tells you what the speed of your two main fans are. This has massive heat sinks in it that are like almost desktop grade. They're fairly big. And they work very well to keep the computer cool. The extra fan that I put in here that I replaced the optical drive with. Um... It's it doesn't really do much. The the difference it makes is very minute. So, I would recommend that if you don't use an optical drive ever, then put the fan in. Go ahead. But if you do use an optical drive from time to time, then just leave the optical drive in. It really won't make that much of a difference. This model has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and that is upgradable to about 64. 16, 64, those are, that's the range you can go to. I suppose you could downgrade to 8, but, you know, why, why would you do that, right? When I first looked at this, app, this laptop, I was very skeptical to get it because I've never really been a fan of Acer, but ever since I discovered their Predator lineup, I have been very, very pleased with it. I looked at the price point of this laptop originally. I was originally going to get the Acer Predator 15, but... I thought, no, 17 inches is, is for me. I'm 17 inches here. So that's the one I decided to get. And I was, um, again, I was amazed by the specs. I looked at this and I'm like, okay, this is too good to be true. But then I looked up reviews of it. And it does have its occasional issues here and there. Like, they do put out some lemons, if you know what I mean. Like, with some of them, they've got something's wrong with the display. Or something's wrong with the speakers. Or something's not right. But... The model I got, other than the dead pixel in the screen, or the damaged pixel, whatever, is fairly solid, fairly nice. The screens, I mean, if you try flexing the screen, it will flex, but it's not a big deal, really, because it is a fairly thin display. There's not a whole lot of bounce to it. I mean, they, all monitors have a little bounce to them, but this isn't bad when you compare it to that. I mean, like, this doesn't even feel like it's screwed in all the way. I'm going to have to tighten that up. This poor girl. This has a matte finish, which is very nice. It feels kind of rubbery, not in a bad way. I don't mean rubbery like really flexible and cheap. I mean rubbery and kind of like bouncy. Kind of like, I guess what I'm saying is it feels like if you dropped it, it would absorb a little bit of the shock. It wouldn't save it from breaking, but it just feels more rugged and better because it's harder to scratch than a glossy display because, you know, glossy displays, are they get fingerprints on them, they scratch easy, and they're just, no. The, this display here, the, the front part, you know, with all the pixels in it that actually displays a picture, is a matte display also, which can be a deal breaker for some people. I like displays like that because they block a lot of the light out from behind you, whereas a glossy display reflects all the light back into your face. But then again, glossy displays articulate color a lot better than a matte display would. So, yeah, that's that can be a deal breaker for some people. I personally like displays like this, like I said. Another thing I forgot to mention on the I.O. is this computer actually has a gigabit Ethernet port, which is spectacular I mean it's great and then it's also got um, killer wireless um, wireless I suppose I could have worded that better anyway so it's got a it's it's got a Wi-Fi card in it that's in on paper is really good but from what I've heard of other people's experience it's not that great and I've had some issues with it myself so I would recommend changing out that Wi-Fi card because it's I mean, it's almost gigabit Wi-Fi, but who has gigabit Wi-Fi in their homes, I should say. So, yeah, I'd recommend changing that card if you have any issues with it. 
This computer has a 5 megapixel camera, which is decent, you know, it's not as good as the resolution you're viewing me in right now. You're viewing me in 9.2 megapixels right now. So not as good, but it's okay for Skype or video chats or whatever. So yeah, that is my thoughts on the Acer Predator 17. It is an amazing gaming laptop. I recommend that if you want to get it for gaming, you get the one with the GTX 980M, which also has a 4K option, but I didn't mention that because 4K gaming laptops aren't really um, a big commodity right now. So yeah, I recommend just getting a regular 10, 1080 by, I mean, 1920 by 1080 laptop screen display. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Acer Predator 17. It is a fabulous laptop for video streaming or video editing or for rendering. It's, I love it. It's perfect. It's more power than I ever really needed out of a laptop, which is good because it will last a lot longer than other laptops. And I highly recommend getting this laptop.